Well, there's some sobering headlines in the news this week. Uh, I don't know about you, Brandon, but uh, uh, things are looking very uh, hot and heavy uh, with respect to Bible prophecy this week. What do you think? Well, it certainly appears that the bear and the dragon are rearing their ugly heads again. Yeah, you know, I'm looking at an article here. Uh, uh, Russia and China can build new world order, uh, says political scientists, as the leaders of two of the world's biggest and fastest growing emerging economies meet in Moscow. Political analysts predict the strategic cooperation between the two nations. And uh, this is an RT article, by the way, Russia Television or Russia Times. Or I'm not sure what uh, Russia TV, I think they're called. But it's the Russian state media. You know, it's kind of like a CBC Radio or, or uh, you know, NPR. Or, uh, but it's, uh, they go on to quote um, one of the leaders uh, from uh, Russia, or I'm sorry, China. They, they quote a Russian leader and a Chinese leader. The Chinese leader says, I believe the world is now at historic crossroads. This is Dr. Kyul Chung, he told this to RT, he says, or some may say that the world is at the brink of either being subdued or overcoming the U.S. NATO military interventions around the world, uh, uh, now moving possibly to Syria or even to Iran. Uh, if Russia and China or the Shanghai Cooperation Organization are too weak to stop U.S.-led NATO military aggression in the North of Africa, this is a Chinese official saying this, by the way, uh, saying that if if the uh, Shanghai Cooperation Organization is too weak to stop the U.S.-led NATO military aggression in the North African region, I hope Russia and China can lead the new global movement to balance the power in the world so they can build a new world order, Brandon, uh, where no more unilateral, aggressive, or even colonial methodology is being put into a sovereign nation uh, such as Libya. They're giving the example. China-Russia trade and economic relationship and huge development between the two nations, I believe, is not only impacting the European continent, but also the global scene, uh, this Chinese... uh, uh, analyst is saying uh, this economic and trade relationship is not limited only to economy but also a strategic relationship so it is going to have a huge impact on the world and then they interviewed this Russian uh, representative and uh, who's this guy um, uh, Sergey Senakoev I uh, probably just butchered that name but he believes that China is one of the places where the real economy of the future lies Choosing Beijing as Russia's leading trade partner was a wise decision, Brandon. He says, we think that this country, we have a lot of opportunities. We are going to deal with China. That is the Russian representative saying this. Uh, Brandon, that is an article from 2011. Everybody listening to, everybody listening to this will say, well, that's, that's, that's not, I mean, we're hearing that in the news today. Oh, excuse me, this is from almost uh, four years ago now. They've been planning this all along. And now today we have in the headlines... Uh, uh, Russia and China making new waves. Now they're going to be. They've made uh, unions to um, to uh, to trade in the yen, the the Chinese currency. Uh, uh, what's your take on what's going on with the the bear and the uh, the dragon there, Brandon? You know, it's amazing, Mike, with with the the quotes in the article that you were just just reading from there from 2011. Like you just said, working on four years ago now. And then today we have headlines littered uh, uh, with news of this of this uh, this new agreement between Russia and China, um, where they almost to the tune of almost four hundred billion dollars. By the way, uh, for Russia to supply China with 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 gas and oil resources, right, right. And, and Mike, check this out. This is the second such agreement that has been made between the two this year. Yeah, for almost the same right. amount of money. So now we're talking almost $800 billion right. that, is, that is changing hands between the dragon and the bear uh, within the last several months. And then now just today we see Russia coming out and saying that they will be doing strategic bomber flights. Uh, and they named several places in the world. But yeah. one that I found the most interesting was the Gulf of Mexico, Mike. Right. And then to think that the backing, listen, understand Russia's economy was headed into the tank because of the, the oil market kind of falling out here in the last couple of months. Right. And now China comes in and bails them out. 
And then what do we see immediately they announced plans to start doing strategic bomber flights around the world and including over the Gulf of Mexico. Yeah, and they've been as close as uh, 50 miles from uh, the California coast, isn't that right? Did I remember reading that right? Th- that is exactly right. That, that, that is very true. So, so there's, there's no doubt, Mike, it, it certainly seems that we are seeing an amazing convergence of prophecy come together here w- with this union of nations, if you will, this, this union of, of end-time players, uh, and it's happening right before our eyes. Yeah, people might be asking, well, where is all this in Bible prophecy? You know, Daniel uh, Daniel talks about this. Uh, he mentions four end time beasts: a lion, bear, leopard, and eagle. And then, uh, and then uh, we fast forward to uh, the Book of Revelation, chapter thirteen. Uh, the those uh, nation beasts are mentioned again. One is one is ominously missing. Uh, we've talked about this before. The the eagle, uh, which represents the United States, is missing. Uh, well, I mean, let's discuss that a little bit. Uh, the Bible says that uh, that uh, the um, the lion had wings as an eagle, and uh, the wings were plucked off and flew and uh, and uh, flew and, and grew up as a man. And uh, I'm paraphrasing that, but uh, uh, and that it clearly it clearly the uh, the for the formation of the United States is mentioned in end time Bible prophecy and clear and shocking detail but when we fast forward to revelation uh, 13 in verse 2 it says in the beast which i saw this is an end time the end time beast uh, which i saw and and this is a reference to perhaps the new world order mentioned in the rt article the beast which i saw was like unto a leopard the leopard mentioned leopard is re- representative of, of germany by the way uh, just briefly the um the, the family name Leopard, if you trace it back, it traces back to Germany, and Germany makes the, you know, made the Leopard tank during the Second World War and, and continues making the Leopard tank today. And Germany is the number one leading economy in Europe right now. And, and it says his feet were the feet of a bear, and his mouth is the mouth of a lion, and the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority. So it almost appears as though this dragon figure... Uh, finances and and uh, and empowers this uh, end time one wor- new world order one world order uh, uh, beast of Revelation thirteen two and now we see now you know Brandon before Vladimir Putin was was president uh, Medvedev was president but before Medvedev was president Vladimir Putin was president and way back then I was making predictions making videos saying look somehow some way. Russia will fall out of, of uh, America's good graces. They will stop being candidates for for uh, the Olympics. You know, and, and the, the, Russia will make a union with China, and uh, this is all going to happen. It didn't look like it was going to happen, but it was going to happen. And here today, we see everything that I said was going to happen is happening as we speak. Bible prophecy in the news today. Yes, it is. And Mike, you, you covered a lot there, but I just want to back up and hit, and hit a couple of points because, you know, you talk, talked about the obvious, uh, to you and I anyway, the obvious disappearance of the United States in the very end of Bible prophecy. Um, and, and it's amazing because this union between China and Russia, well, there's a couple of points. Uh, you know, China has just become the world's largest economy within the last couple of, uh, within the last few months. So that there's right. a huge key, and then you take this union between the two, and it's very obvious that, that this uh, this move by Russia is is a slap at the U.S. because of the the uh, the attempted sanctions by the United States and other countries against Russia because of the situation in Ukraine. So we see the United States being edged out, uh, uh, you know, right before our very eyes. And, and like you said. For, for a long time, many people have said, well, this union, you know, between Russia and China couldn't happen, or the United States disappearing and kind of weakening, well, it couldn't happen as a world superpower, but yet we're seeing it happen slowly but surely, and now it seems to be speeding up right. on a daily basis. Right, speeding up, yeah. Well, I mean, uh, there, there's a lot of unrest in the United States, you know. Uh, Putin uh, has uh, 70 to 80 percent approval rating, and uh, Obama has, like, uh, uh, negative uh, 10 uh, approval rating or whatever it is. I'm not even sure where it is today. Like, uh, uh, the guy is so unpopular. I mean, look at his great loss in the midterms. Uh, 
uh, you know, his popularity is circling the drain there. And, and there's efforts underfoot now. There's sheriffs are going to Washington. Uh, uh, there's a couple of groups of different different groups of sheriffs going up there. Uh, one group is going up there with arrest warrants and uh, uh, another group is going up there to protest the uh, the immigration uh uh, debacle, you know, he's threatening uh, executive action on that, and um, uh, you know, uh, playing the dictator card there, and maybe go full blown Mussolini, you know, after the uh, after the new uh, the new uh, Congress finally seats in in, uh, in January. But uh, uh, it's all very interesting, very fascinating stuff, Brandon. Uh, end time prophecy. I mean, uh, I mean, if you're not reading the headlines with 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 the papers in one hand or your laptop in one hand and the Bible in the other, you're doing yourself a, a great injustice, I think. But uh, uh, let's let's switch gears here a little bit. Um, I want to talk about <clears throat> the latest now on the Pope. Uh, we see back in June, I think it was, uh, it was reported that the Pope invited Islam into the Vatican. Do you remember anything about that? Well, I, I do, Mike, and, and we we saw that then, and I think the context of that was that they were actually having uh, allowed to have Muslim prayers within the walls of the Vatican. And then we've seen though that since this pope has been uh, has been elected, that that he has continued to reach out to Islam. I and mean, we saw him uh, washing the feet of Islamic girls right. uh, in, in an effort to reach out. Uh, you know, and we've just seen blasphemy after blasphemy. But yes, obviously, like you say, back just a few months ago, um, we had Islamic prayers within the walls of the Vatican. Right, yeah, I just found it here, Brandon. According to recent Times of Israel report, Islamic and Jewish representative will join Pope Francis for an interfaith event Sunday at the Vatican. Imagine that, uh, the Muslims for, a, for a, a syncretist event at the Vatican. For those who don't know, syncretism is a conflation of all the world's philosophies into one. And, you know, the, the Pope has, has come out recently and said that uh, that atheists uh, can get into heaven by their own good works, uh, a, a direct contradiction of Scripture. You know, the Book of Romans is very, uh, very uh, adamantly uh, says that it's, it's by faith, it's, it's not by your own works. And yet the, the, the Pope is saying clearly the atheists can get in based on their own works. Uh, we've talked about that before, but... Um, yeah, here we have Pope Francis uh, inviting representatives of the two faiths, uh, Perez and Palestinian Authority President Mahmoud, Ab- Mahmoud, Mahmoud Abbas, uh, to to the prayer summit also, uh, which will focus on peace among the often embattled monotheistic religions. So the Pope playing the syncretist card there, Brandon. And that is old news. That's from June, and that apparently did happen in June. But uh, what's happening this week? Well, in a first... Washington National Cathedral to host Friday Muslim prayer service. Yeah, that's right. Uh, the uh, syncretist movement comes to Washington. Washington Nath- National Cathedral, known for presidential funerals and other major spiritual uh, services, will host a Muslim prayer service, Brandon, for the first time this Friday, apparently. Yeah, it, it, it's amazing, Mike. You know, we, we've documented this before, but it just seems that the Pope and Obama are just walking hand in hand here, step by step, making the same moves. Um, and you just said two things there uh, about the Pope reaching out to Islam and having the prayers within the Vatican, but as well as reaching out to who? To Iran. And think right. about this, Mike. Not only what you just said, are we getting ready to see Islamic prayers uh, in D.C., but also just this last week it's come out that Obama has been writing secret letters to right. Iran, yes. asking, you know, uh, basically kind of, kind of promising help if, if they'll help us on the front with ISIS. Meanwhile, we see this administration constantly spit in the face of Israel. Right. Just two weeks ago, two administration officials literally cursing uh, Benjamin Netanyahu. Well, I mean, here we have Netanyahu coming out and saying, "Look." Uh, uh, Israel, uh, Israel's number one enemy is Islam, or is is, uh, is Iran rather, and uh, and now we have uh, Obama playing footsies with the Iranian uh, leadership over there. Uh, you know, if Obama thinks that that the president of Iran has any power at all, he's sadly mistaken. The power all lies with the uh, with the Ayatollah over there. And the Ayatollah has, has this week outlined uh, a nine-point plan for the annihilation of Israel. The Ayatollah. And, and this isn't the first time that this has happened either. 
Right, I mean, he's saying that the only way to deal with Israel is to wipe them out. And the Ayatollah co pulls the strings over there. Uh, they're the puppet masters, and um, and uh, the president is just the the face, the media face. And and uh, if Obama doesn't realize that, uh, he's got some major issues, although uh, something tells me he does realize that. And, uh, and uh, you know, Obama, you know, we've been saying for years, ever since 2008, Obama's in there to uh, wipe out uh, Israel, wipe out America. You know, the two great, the, the, the great Satan is America and the little Satan is Israel, uh, by the way. And uh, if the Islamists don't have an Islamic plant in the White House doing exactly that, then I don't know what. I mean, he's following the... He's following the prescription for the annihilation of Israel and the annihilation of America. He's following that prescription uh, uh, virtually un 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 unencumbered, uh, essentially. You know, like, uh, and uh, you know, there are people who see that. You know, there's groups that want to arrest him and and so on. But it just seems to me like uh, the people who have any real power in the United States of America, they're just uh, they're just not making an effort to. Um, they just don't see it. I don't know. I don't know what to say about that. Yeah, I, I, I don't, I don't either, Mike. It's been, um, it's been very confusing to me at times. I will admit uh, to watch this all play out um, because it seems that no one uh, within the within the walls of government has um, has the guts to stand up uh, to this administration uh, and the the obvious lawlessness of this administration. Um, but uh, but it but it is amazing to watch the shift in the United States here as we as we take our protection away from Israel and begin to offer it to these enemies of Israel. Um, and it's not only Iran. I mean, you, you know, think about Mike the empowerment of the Muslim Brotherhood that this administration has offered throughout the Middle East. I mean, you know, we were responsible for starting the the uh, the the, um, the Arab Spring as, as it was, you know, and, mm -hmm. and all of that is still unfolding and playing out. And what we see going on in Syria, um, and, and the documented cases of the United States supplying weapons to Al Qaeda, supplying weapons. So ISIS, who apparently we're now fighting. So, it, you know, it is it is amazing to watch this veil of protection that has been offered to Israel by the United States for years and years and years now just being pulled away every single day. Well, you know, it's funny you mention that because uh, the Muslim Brotherhood, because... Um uh, you know, as we look through as we look through uh, through Bible prophecy, it, uh, it, it clear it mentions uh, several nations that will be overthrown by this Antichrist figure, and and uh, you know we're not saying that Obama is the Antichrist. Uh, you mentioned that he is responsible for uh, the, the beginning beginnings of the uh, the uh, the Arab Spring, uh, and and several nations are mentioned, and all those nations are are, are now uh, involved in the whole thing, and it, and it goes on to say that Egypt will not escape. And it looked like when the Egyptian military took the country back from Morsi and the Muslim Brotherhood, it looked like Israel, uh, Egypt had escaped. But now we find out that the that ISIS, which is you know essentially um, uh, uh, spirit brothers with uh, with uh, with the uh, Muslim Brotherhood, it appears that that uh, Egypt has not escaped because ISIS has set up a, a what they call a caliphate in the in the Sinai Peninsula. Which is Egyptian uh, territory, Brandon? I mean, uh, they're only they could you could almost throw a stone from there and hit Jerusalem, and here is ISIS. They've set up an Islamic uh, a caliphate uh, on Egyptian soil. So Egypt has 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 according to Bible prophecy and according to to the headlines this week, uh, Egypt has not escaped. No, it certainly doesn't appear that they have, Mike. Uh, and, and again, it's, it's just amazing, you know. To, to watch the events that unfolded in Egypt, and then you know now Syria. Uh, you know, I mean, we, we look at what's happening in Syria, mm -hmm. and uh, and Damascus is is slowly but surely becoming a, a ruinous wasteland. Just just as was prophesied right. thousands of you know uh, you know almost two thousand years ago. Um, so it, it's just it, it's amazing to watch these events unfold. Um, and I would just encourage people like you did earlier to get out your newspaper or get out your laptop, whatever you're getting your news on, and, and hold that in one hand and hold your Bible in the other and read the events of Revelation and the events of Daniel and things prophesied by Isaiah and Jeremiah and Ezekiel. And it's unbelievable at the astounding accuracy with which these events were prophesied thousands of years ago and they're happening in mm -hmm. our lifetime right in front of our eyes. Daniel eleven forty two it says there he saw he shall uh, stretch forth his hand upon the also upon the countries, 
and the land of Egypt shall not escape. It's very interesting that it's, it singles out e Egypt there. Uh, and it did look like Egypt w did escape. And uh, now we find out, no, not so fast, Egypt. Uh, looks like you've got a caliphate on your hands. And really, it, it is true what you say about Damascus. I mean, I mean, we are seeing uh, video images and, and picture images of, of Damascus, uh, of the ruinous heap of Damascus. Uh, uh, but uh, now that uh, Obama has uh, once again violated his own oath, you know, no boots on the ground, and yet now he just tripled the number of boots on the ground in uh, in Iraq, and uh, he's going after Syria and Iraq, and uh, and uh, you know because he heard tidings out of that area, now he's going forth with great fury uh, to, to destroy and utterly make away many. Uh, perhaps that many refers to the one third of uh, the sixth trumpet. I don't know what you what you think about that. Well, you know, Mike, it certainly does seem to be pointing there. Uh, with all of these events lining up. Uh, and listen, uh, you know, what did the Pope say just in the last couple of months? World War Three has already started. Uh, you you know, and, and others, other other major uh, political and religious figures have, have basically made that same kind of statement. And, uh, you know, Mike, I would have to tend to agree with them that the world is in turmoil as a whole. Um, and the United States is at the center of all of it. Well, that's exactly right, and and uh, God, you know, it is sad to to uh, it is sad when we when we when we're reminded with sobriety that the United States is is on the way out. It really does look that way, and um, and uh, you know, even with this uh, with this new election and and uh, powers being stripped from Obama, you know, he does have his pen and he does have his phone and he's got his uh, ISIS Muslim Brotherhood cronies to uh, take care of his interests. You know, uh, if 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 we're right about his interests and 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 that being that that his, his that he wants the destruction of his own country. In fact, we don't even know if the United States of America is his own country. We we uh, you know we uh, we uh, seriously doubt that even. But uh, because really nobody knows who this man is. Uh, essentially, who is who is Barack Hussein Obama? Uh, you know, Donald Trump was interviewed recently and, and said, uh, "Look, uh, you know, his name's not." His name hasn't always been Barack Obama. Barry Sotoro is his name, and he changed his name, and uh, nobody knows who he is. Uh, that was Donald Trump just this week. Uh, yeah. So who is this man? Uh, we don't know, but we know what he's doing. He's destroying the well, country. He certainly appears to be a man from nowhere, Mike. A man and, from nowhere. Uh, as documented by, uh, by many uh, senators and some Congress people as well, uh, he, he has proven himself to be a man of lawlessness. He continually tramples on the laws of this land. Um, and spits on our Constitution, uh, and to, to the point to where, uh, you know, some are even questioning, are we, are we even the United States anymore right now? You know, are, are, are we still a sovereign country? We basically right. have no borders. Right. Um, so, you know, it's just, uh, the, the things, again, the, the things that are happening, that we're watching happen every day before us on the news, um, they, are, they are much larger than just, than just the uh, than just on the surface, the political implications uh, that they would seem to have on the surface. I'm going to let you go here, Brandon. But uh, uh, I just heard today on Fox News uh, they've been interviewing uh, some of the um, the new uh, powers in Congress there, and and you know they're all calling for uh, for all out boots on the ground to take to take care of uh, to get to get Bashar Assad out, the leader of of, yeah. uh, of Syria. And uh, to go full full steam ahead with that whole Syria issue and uh, take care of business in Iraq. I mean, uh, uh, they may, uh, the uh, the new Congress may prove to be useful idiots for for Barack Obama. Isn't that amazing, Mike? That that they want to get rid of Assad, who he is a dictator for sure, and he is an evil man. But basically, the Christians in Syria under his rule and, and reign have have pretty well been left alone. Right. But what do we see happening with the people that the powers that be seem to want to turn Syria over to and Egypt over to and, and Iraq over to? Um, what do we see happening in each one of those countries? What, what, is, what, what happens as soon as the overthrow happens? Christians are persecuted. Right. Yeah, I mean, we saw it in Egypt. They were having beheadings and crucifixions in Egypt during the control of the short period of time that the Muslim Brotherhood was in control there. Right, right. Yeah, and we see a vacuum of power. We see a vacuum of, of uh, the aggressive use of force against the Islamic 
uh, thugs who uh, want to establish a, a caliphate and uh, r- uh, you know uh, rule and reign people for for Satan. Uh, you know, uh, there's lots of evidence that uh, the Allah of the of the Quran is the, is Satan of the Bible. I mean, if we if we look at the comparison, compare the two. Uh, we see uh, we see a, a hateful uh, warmonger in the Quran and a, a loving God who cares about the 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 uh, the best outcomes for humanity in the Bible. I mean, we see a stark contrast there between the two, and uh, and uh, you know at least with Saddam Hussein, uh, I mean, I'm almost tempted to start a campaign to get some of his DNA to clone that guy so we can get some order back over there. At least he knew how to. <laughs> at least we knew how to keep. He knew how to keep them under his thumb. You know, keep everything in order there. I mean, I don't know. Well, well, it's amazing, Mike, because that is true with Hussein, as terrible as he was. Um, but, you know, to, to go back to Egypt with, with, with Morsi, again, he was a dictator. But right. what he was not doing was crucifying and beheading Christians in the street. That's what he was not doing. They were basically allowed to worship there in freedom. Uh, and we see that throughout the mm-hmm. Middle East. Sure. Well, listen, Brandon, uh, we could go on and on about this, uh, but uh, I just think people really need to pay attention to what's happening around them today and, and uh, you know, hit the restart button on your prophecy. Good grief. I mean, if, if you've been taught that that you're, you're out of here by Revelation 4, verse 1, uh, I'm afraid that uh, your Bible teacher has done you great harm. And I just think you need to reset these things and uh, and uh, really listen to what we're telling you here, that uh, the end time is not coming. We're already into uh, Revelation chapter 10 here. And uh, that, is, that is very clear if you, if you would just, uh, you know, turn off your television sets and, and pay attention to what's going on. Uh, uh, clearly, um, uh, Revelation 4.1 is, is, is gone. We've gone way beyond that. Uh, the trumpets are blowing, and we're already looking at the sixth trumpet of Revelation here. Absolutely, Mike. And, you know, let's just end here on a positive note, brother. You, you know, you, you and I, it, it's, it's our duty, it's our job to point out these events. Sometimes it sounds scary, sometimes it sounds almost like fear-mongering, but it certainly is not that. We are here as a warning, brother, and we are just trying to wake people up to the times that they live in and trying to tell people, if you are if you are saved, if you are bought by the blood of Jesus, then there is no reason to be scared in this time. As a matter of fact, you should be excited because we're nearing that return. If you are not, there is no better time than now. Find you someone that can give you some good spiritual counsel and can lead you and and point you in the direction of that saving relationship with Jesus Christ. Well, I can always count on you to end the show on a positive note, Brandon, uh, and I appreciate that. And uh, you've been listening to the Prophecy Report. Uh, My name is Mike Shoesmith, and uh, with me is Brandon Gallops, and uh, we'll talk to you next time.